first item would be adoption of the agenda. Move. Second. Adoption. All in favor? Motion approved. One delegation this evening from the United Way. So, Sigmund Madden and uh, I can't remember the lady's name. Are here to talk to us about the uh, programs funded here in the Comic Valley. You're welcome. Thanks very much. I'm not sure if can people hear me okay. Do I need the mic? No, that's yeah. just more for the. Okay. So thanks very much, Mayor and Council. Pleased to be here. Uh, I just wanted to speak to what United Way is doing in the community. Obviously, uh, thanks for declaring it United Way Week. It's nice to see our banner up above uh, the roadway there. That's great. Uh, so United Way, we've been in the community for decades. And uh, last year we raised 245000 in the Comox Valley. And uh, I want to officially thank, even though they're not present, but just to remind people that uh, the base obviously runs a very strong campaign. They raised over 50000 last year for United Way for local programs. Costco is one of our biggest supporters. Almost all of the staff in Costco make a donation through the United Way to United Way programs. And so it's quite a bit of a rivalry between Costco and the base who gets the top campaign. Two years ago it was Costco and uh, last year it was the base. So obviously that's 100000 coming from two workplace campaigns. It shows you the power of when a workplace gets behind local programming and uh, supporting the United Way. Some of the other, obviously the financial institutions run uh, campaigns, so BMO, TD, CIBC, all of them will be running the United Way campaigns through the fall, and, there's, and their donations locally stay locally, they're invested in programming right here in the Comox Valley. So uh, this year, uh, donations to United Way, local donations, went to 18 programs. So our funding cycle is from May 1st until April 30th, uh, so there's 18 programs, and that's helping over 3,300 people in the Comox Valley. And so many of you would know the programs. I know I've talked to some of you about uh, some of the programs, the Eureka program where they go into the school systems, talk about mental health. And that's a, the black top players is a bit, very popular one we've been funding for years. The Transition House Society, Hospice is obviously a big core piece. We fund hospice throughout our geographic area with our demographics. What was it last week that the number of seniors in Canada is greater than the number of young people who passed that threshold last week or two weeks ago? Uh, obviously, that's a big issue. You want to continue to support hospice and uh, seniors programming. You can look in your packages. You can see the whole list of the 18 programs. Uh, but I do want to reiterate, the money raised here stays here. We want to invest here. So a uh, couple of other programs. I'm not sure if everybody's familiar with the United Way Better at Home program, which is geared at keeping seniors in the home. So it's light housekeeping, driving people to doctor's appointments, all of that. So you can see the numbers. There's sort of a one pager that indicates that the program started up a year and a half ago, and there's already a full client list being helped through the Better at Home program here in Comox Valley. And then we also obviously run the Success by Six programs. Does everybody you know what Success by Six is? Anybody who doesn't know what, what Success by Six is? Yes, no. So, okay, Success by Six, has anybody ever seen the Hop in the Park program in the summer? Uh, that's what Family Services runs. That program. That's just one of the programs. There's many programs that are funded through United Way to help uh, the zero to six. You know, pre-birth, birth, and up to six years old. Obviously, the, the vulnerability index that we see for young children coming into uh, kindergarten, there's still a high vulnerability index for the children in this valley. So a lot of our programming and the success basis dollars are invested through local uh, agencies like the Family Resource Society, and they offer these Success by Six programs. They're parent taught programs, uh, programs in the summertime, there's a lot of nutrition, counseling, dads, there's a dads program now that we're funding that's about dads who are single parents raising their kids. So a lot of people think of the other way as we're a community chess. Raise money, we give money out, and they kind of ask, what's the play? You know, why should I give to you another way? when I could just give directly to the charity. I give to other charities then in other way, and I'll need to go to the United Way as well. And I just want to respond to that question, even though you aren't you know, asking me that question. It really is about understanding what the community needs are in this community and matching that up with agencies that are effective. We have defunded agencies in the past if they aren't capable of delivering on what they promise in their grant applications. We have a very rigorous grant application process. We have a local impact council. 
people in Coma Valley, they're from the Ministry of Children and Families, they're from various agencies that we do not fund that have expertise on these issues, RCMP, those kind of folks, and they're the ones who go through the applications and make the recommendations for Coma Valley. It's not me, it's not our staff, it's, it's local people. And so they are bringing information from other, uh, they're funding through other sources, BC Housing and CFD. We bring that information together and we go, okay, where's the best bang for the buck for the donors and where do we invest that in and who's being cooperative, who works well in the sandbox, you know, as an agency, are they partnering with other agencies? And we work hard to get those partnerships. So if sometimes there's a trend, we see something that's not being addressed, we'll, we'll go to the agency and say, okay, come to us with an application because we see this need locally in Oma Valley. So when people say, why well, United Way? Yes, you can give directly to hospice. I do. I love hospice, but uh, one of the things that hospice counts on our dollars for certain programs. And one of our ways that we can add value to the community is to actually understand identify trends before they happen or as they're coming about and develop partnerships with agencies to fund them so that we can address them early. Certainly our anti-bullying and our, uh, and our suicide prevention work that we've done in the workplace, or sorry, in the school, uh, the school districts have been about, you know, those issues are now being funded by the province. It was the United Ways across the province that got in on that early on and started to fund those programs. So, that's just an overarching, you know, we do the grants, 18 programs, we raise those funds, we're doing a due diligence piece on behalf of donors to make sure that, that the agencies are doing a good job, working well together, cost effective. Uh, Success by Sex, the Better at Home program. Well, uh, there's a couple of things that I would like to talk about partnering either with the city or with other partners in the community. So you'll see under the packages the Nanaimo Vital Signs Report. I didn't bring that to say, oh, yay, Nanaimo. I just wanted to demonstrate that two years ago, uh, United Way worked with the city of Nanaimo, Island Savings, and uh, the, the Community Foundation to develop the Vital Signs Report. And so we are all funding this jointly together, and we work together to produce this report annually. And I know there's interest. Jody McDonald's our staff up here in Comox Valley, and she's been going to the social planning council meetings, talking to the community foundation. There's obviously a keen interest to have some kind of a, a report card that talks about the indicators around the economy, uh, the gap between the rich and poor. That's what the vital science is. And so what we'd like to do is you know, have some conversations over the coming weeks to see if there's an appetite. We would put our money in as a partner to the vital science report and, and join staff time to facilitate some of that. We'd like to get the community foundation and see if there's an appetite from the municipal side to also be a partner to produce that kind of report. So that's one piece. I also wanted to talk about BC211. So BC211, if you Google that, is a service 411 we know, 911 we know, 211 is a phone and web-based service that's available in Saskatoon. It's available actually to 60% of Canadians in, in Canada. In BC, it's available to the Lower Mainland, Fraser Valley, and up the Sunshine Coast. It's a web-based service of all social service, health-based services, so you could call and you can uh, do a search on BC211 if you want to get access and find out what services are available in Comox Valley. It's not available on the island and we're talking all the United Ways across uh, BC are working together to find the funding and introduce BC211 across our across the island and across BC. BC. So you'll, you'll probably hear more from me about the BC211. We'll do it regardless if we find a local funder in Comox but definitely there's, it's a three-year roll-up. We have to collect all the data and do an education campaign about the availability of BC211. So I'm just sort of giving you a heads up. We want to roll BC211 out. And I'll just give you an example of how it gets used. Somebody in Kelowna lives in Kelowna. Their mother lives here. There's no local family. The mother has a fall. It's in the hospital. Coming back out of the hospital. This is a real example. Uh, that person in Kelowna is trying to access services here. Yes, they're talking to the doctor, they come in, spend a couple of days. They're still trying to deliver a whole suite of services to, them, to their mother. They can go do a web chat or talk to BC211 and know all the services that are available in the community, and they can be linked up. So that's just one example of how a BC211 service is, is useful. Or if you move to the community, you need nothing about the resources. You need to know where the parent taught or the Success by Six programs. You go to BC211. So vital signs, we'd love to do it in Comox Valley. We'd love to have a partnership with you, uh, either a funder or another arrangement. 
uh, BC211, that's also one of the things that's, you know, we'll be talking about rolling out. And I did want to mention that uh, one of the, my one ask for the night, those are two heads up we'll be talking to you about, uh, we'd like to run a workplace campaign within, uh, within your staff, within the, uh, the city staff. And so that's one of the things we'd like to talk. Uh, most other communities, they run a workplace campaign. It's by choice. We come in, we do presentations, give the pledge forms, that sort of thing. But it's actually a one way that donors can invest their donations locally through the United Way. So we'll be talking to you about that after the meeting. So that's it for me. Just to remind you, we're here in the community. We've been here for decades. I know many of you have been supporters of United Way one way or another. So thank you for that. I thank you for your time, and uh, I'll take any questions. Great. Questions from members of council this time? Council Price. Yes, and thank you. A very thorough uh, background. Uh, with the vital signs, you mentioned the partnering mm -hmm. uh, either financially or other ways. What, what other ways did you...? Well, the, in Nanaimo, we have a social planner that works for the city, and so he put his time. The city put in 5,000 and John's time. I put my time, and we put 5,000 into the to the report, and so we were the ones working and uh, did the management team to actually manage the project and make sure there's many indicators you could choose to highlight, right? So there's going to be a process, and we and we work with the local division of family practice, you know, the public health officer to get those that data. So that's whether or not there's anybody within your staff that can help be on that management team. That's a good good role to play from a municipal side because obviously you want the data too, right? I just, I was curious that the uh, Better at Home mm -hmm. program, that's not one I've heard about, mm -hmm. is that, who, who runs that? It's actually a society out of Hornby, does it, for the mm -hmm. Comox Valley, and so it's funded through United Way, and uh, yeah, we did the community development process, would have been to almost two years, and to choose which agency, and the community themselves, the service providers in the community chose that. Society to, to offer that because they had a, a strong volunteer base serving seniors and, and experienced serving seniors. So that's that's up and running and it's uh, it, there's been incredible uptake. Uh, you know, I can see we're going to have to lobby the province for more funds. Most of the funds come from the province and United Way. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. Okay, thanks for your presentation. Thanks for your time. Great, thank you. much appreciated. All right, uh, we have minutes of the council meeting uh, September 16th for approval. Second. Uh, approval then, all those in favor? That's okay. We received the manager report. Move to receive. Second. We received then, all those in favor? Uh, Barry, any questions, concerns, updates? Okay. Assume that following the um, open house on the Marina project that work is still on that yes, um, I believe that the consultants will be back up and making a presentation to Council on the 21st okay. of October. Great. So that will be a summary of the last open house and all the public comments we've received and essentially the next steps from that point. Okay. Yeah, and regarding that, the, the comments that you received from the last open house, does the developer acknowledge that to each person, or do they just put their, you know, the... Uh, Are you talking about the Marina project? Yeah, the Marina project. You say developer, right? Uh, not the developer, the uh, architect fellow that was there. So, because uh, I've had some people say, you know, over the last year or so, they put comments in and no one's ever got back to them, and they just wonder, you know, where those lie, all those comments are. The, the comments... The comment sheets were given to the architect. We also have a copy of those. Mm -hmm. Those will be provided as part of the report to council, so you will see them. Okay. Uh, know that individuals are not directly necessarily contacted okay. about those comments, but um, you know, in, in terms of taking all those issues into account, yes, yeah. they are, and, and, and council will see them as well. Yeah, from record, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Seeing that, we'll move on to the um, press report for really just the minutes of the Regional District Board for September 2nd, Waste Management 17th, and Hospital Board 17th. Move to receipt. Second. Receipt of all those. All those in favor? Motion to carry. 
then we have for adoption the permissive tax exemption bylaw. Move adoption. Thank you. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Motion's carried. For new business, uh, we have a report from staff on the computer system and recommendations. So, see. Move the recommendation or Okay, we, we can discuss it. Yeah, you can move it and then we can discuss, discuss it. Move, move the recommendation. Second for that? No, Second. Sir. Okay, so discussion. Uh, maybe open with the CEO and our director of finance is in here. But, uh, you know, the CEO has been wrestling with this for a little while. Too, so. Yes, we looked at uh, a couple of options as to how to address this concern, and as Don points out in his memo, we did identify some funds for survey replacement in next year's financial plan, but uh, recent events have, have led to us wanting or needing to accelerate this uh, faster than we would like. Uh, we have old servers. They are starting to show uh, more than their age. Uh, we've probably about two or three years out of them beyond what their life expectancy was. And uh, it's just, we're getting to the point where, you know, our financial software demands a lot of computer power. Uh, staff, as they continue to use computers, they, they strain the servers. So uh, this is something that we are looking at for replacement at this stage, as well as adding it to the financial plan for regular replacement as well. Okay, any questions, Councillor Kim? So if I understand correctly, 70000 this year and again 70000 in the next year's budget? No. 70000 uh, in what we're looking at is advancing, say, the 25000 we had in 2016 to this year, uh, as well as expending the rest of what we need to in terms of buying the servers this year. Uh, we will then begin the process of replacing in the various departments. The town hall server is the most in dire need of replacement. But the intent of spending uh, the brunt of that cash at this time means that we have servers that if, if we lose one here, we can pull one that's identical and, and replace what we have. So our downtime is reduced significantly. As we move forward, some of those servers won't be tasked as hard in the future. So we'll be able to stagger uh, their replacement and the costs associated over uh, the three to four year cycle that we're proposing. Thank you for that. Okay. Um, yeah, I know just uh, from the email side of things, I know that there was quite a bit of disruption over the last couple of weeks. So that does affect productivity. Uh, a lot of work gets done through email. So it would appear that uh, we... Uh, Really have to go ahead with this. Um, your last paragraph, or last paragraph of the report refers refers to the cloud, and we know hear about that. Um, is that just relevant to the recreation department software, or is that relevant to other things that we're doing? Are we doing stuff in the cloud already, or is that we, we are on a on a very limited basis, and as part of the discussion has been with. Uh, the website uh, renewal, where, uh, where that information is hosted in the future may be moving to cloud-based technology as well. Um, the recreation software discussion, as Don points out, there are a couple of different approaches. One is server-based, the other is cloud-based, and I don't believe um, they've come to any conclusions. I think that, is, that meeting is set still for a few weeks away. But it is, uh, as time goes on, it's, it's definitely a direction that we may be taking in the future. And I see you also, in part of the report also references the fact that the financial plan will include upgrades on an ongoing basis. Yes. So that we're not uh, caught hopefully off guard, although things can always change. Councilor Ron? Yeah, just with the cloud, they're maybe a little too technical. Do we use our own servers as a cloud, or do we have it go outside? of our servers, because you, know, you can rig your own home up to a cloud, right? Or you can go to, like, Apple and use their cloud. You know, is that what they mean by cloud? Yes, some of it is, is going somewhere else. Yeah, um, outside of our building. Our, <laughs> essentially, yeah. our system <laughs> is internal. Okay. Uh, we have, uh, at, at, at present, our website is hosted 
through a, a local company that I believe uses their own cloud or, or yeah. something else. Uh, but essentially our information, our financial uh, services information, our mapping information, tax information is all in-house. Okay. We have it on our own server. Right. That's what my concern was. If it was going to a cloud somewhere that it could be hacked or something, yeah. whereas if we have our own cloud. Right. And I was pleased to see in this quote that the fire hall was going to get the hand <laughs> Not that they deserve the hand downs but that, that stuff is yeah. from the rec center is being used. So. Yeah, they have, again, they have less, uh, less wear and tear on, on the systems. So the, the, the brunt of the computing power is with our financial software, uh, which will have its own independent server, and then the email system, which, again, will be located on a different server as, as well as uh, the other computing needs. Excellent. Council Price? Yes, so, so when our server did go down, uh, our data was secure. We didn't, that was in turn a concern. It was just that we lost ability. We, we, we lost uh, perhaps a day or two of of information. Uh, we do backups daily. Uh, we do additional backups weekly and, and I think there's about at present three to five levels of backups. The problem we ran into is when uh, one of those backups was corrupted, the stuff that then happens in the future continues to be corrupted, so you lose the ability to go back. So there's, they've built in a fail-safe, another fail-safe, uh, to address that, and hopefully you know, the chances of that happening again in the future are minimal. Okay. Uh, municipalities uh, uh, are all different uh, programs or servers. They're not all connected to one, one program, correct? Correct. Uh, so I've seen it work. Good and bad, both ways. Uh, you know, provincially in the education system, they had just switched to another new system and it's failed. And uh, so uh, it, it doesn't seem to be a magic answer to go collectively uh, as opposed to individually with different systems. So. Well, we run we run a similar or the identical financial software package, uh, I believe, at Cumberland. Yes. And Courtney runs a different uh, financial software package. But there are some similarities we, we use in other, other um, software. Like the rec departments. Kind of cool. Yes, and the rec departments right now, uh, in particular, the, the ones in the Comox Valley, are trying to decide on a software package that is the same throughout, which will give them a little more strength in, in terms of the programming and, and directing people accordingly. Okay, and you feel comfortable with in terms of the expenditure um, working with the GCS company that you know, Tom's been working for a long time with uh, in terms of you know, not going out to bid for other uh, agency or companies? Well, GCS, the, the company that has provided support, is, is essentially acting in, in this case as well as our IT department. We don't have uh, staff that that just do IT. We are, I mean, Don talks about it briefly, but somewhere down the road we will have to uh, engage uh, additional staff to provide us in-house service. But at present, uh, what we're getting from G GCS meets our needs. And so this bid, you know, which, which we would normally consider a bid of this value, uh, we would request RFPs, it's tied in with the service that we receive, so you're actually paying for staff time and com computer purchasing of hardware. So that's why we, uh, in this case, are looking at essentially a sole source rather than going out to bid because it's the co it's the employees that are providing it for us. And at present, we get good enough value that uh, if if we were to do it by having IT staff. You know, our budget would have to be increased significantly simply because we're looking at more bodies. Okay. Any further? Seeing none, all in favor? Motion's carried. All right, so we'll move on to correspondence. Uh, the first three letters relate to, I think, pretty much the same issue Mackline Park, Maybrook, etc. So I, uh, I receive all three of those mm -hmm. at the same time, and then I just had a, a request for staff or for council. How can we do that? If that's okay? Sure.
Sure. Well, I guess we could refer, receive them and refer them to staff, but uh, we could receive them. I just wanted to receive them for now, and then I'll make a motion to receive all three. Carried and follow up. Then. Yeah, I, I noticed that uh, staff has got a meeting coming or a, a report coming on this on one of the bottoms of one of the letters. Mm -hmm. I noticed that, mm -hmm. and um, it seems to me that it's probably time to set up a committee uh, on this regarding the future of Shakeside and the MacLang Well. And I would just ask if staff could, in their report, give us some recommendations on which user groups and what kind of uh, committee that should look like as part of that report. Okay, and so at this point, I guess staff could come back with something based on that to make some terms of reference for that committee. Is that your suggestion? That's what I'm getting at. Yeah, and I noticed on the bottom one of those letters that it said sometime in October they were bringing a report, so it shouldn't be. Okay, should be so is there a seconder for that? To for, staff for that purpose. Okay. And CAO, any chance we can get that uh, later this month? Yes, yes, I've already started to work on the report in terms of what we've done and, and what options lie ahead. And, and uh, if I understand this correctly, so it's to uh, look at what can be done to meet the terms of the will? Um, yeah, and to, well, I think we need a committee of, there would be different groups out there that would have a vested interest in, I know the Mac Lang Society and maybe the Stream Keepers, and I'm not very really sure who they all are. So if you could give us a synopsis of who would be relevant at a committee, and then um, there's also the will issue that needs to be dealt with and how that will all play together. So I'm not really sure how to put that community together, so I'm asking okay. you to give us some recommendations. Sure. Should it should involve members of the society, members of public, uh, staff, perhaps counselor. Too. Counselor, too, yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right, so anything further on that? Are you clear on that? See you? Yep. Just a quick yes. moment. I think when we uh, we had the, uh, back when we had the vote on this matter, is that uh, that was one of the wishes that down the road that we would uh, reconnect with the community and uh, and the Mac Lang Society be invited to be part of that community discussion. So I, I uh, concur with uh, Councillor Grant there. I think it's a good idea. Great. And should Council be represented, I would certainly be interested okay. in participating. All right. We'll, uh, we'll see what the terms of reference involve and uh, get some. Many members appointed, and away we go. And so, in the next couple of weeks, you figure? Absolutely. Okay. So we'll discuss that hopefully on the October 21st. Thank you, councillors. Yeah, and, and I, I think it is a great idea, too. And I think, you know, just putting it all on the table, because sometimes when I read these letters and it talks about the town never maintained Shakespeare, mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it was never modernized, but it certainly was maintained. and. Uh, uh, it was lived in. It, it always had a flooded basement, I and mean, we never dealt with that residual problem. But when Mac Lang lived there, he was sloshing around in his gum boots. <laughs> <laughs> so, but the town did maintain, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. just. Uh, I think there's an opportunity for sure to move forward on this and, uh, and take a fresh look at things, perhaps as well. So, do we move on that? You move and second. Okay, so all those in favor? Any opposed? Motion is carried. All right, great. Um, next letter then on the list is from Dave Newley and Rick Julian regarding uh, burning of farm waste. Mm -hmm. um, why aren't you saying it was going to be here, but I don't see it. So I would move receiving that we grant that request. I'll second that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, any discussion? CAO? Any concerns? Uh, Difficult to just grant the request because it's in contravention of the bylaw. So you have to amend the bylaw to permit it. Um, so you may wish to consider a staff report to see what the impact of that would be. Because I'm anticipating that if you approve this request, you will be starting to get requ requests from the Point Homes area uh, for something similar. Now, under the bylaw, it talks about permits and so on, but I take it that's for areas outside the town? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay, so did you want me to, what part did you want me to do that? Yes, we receive it in the letter and we refer it to staff for report. Okay. Yeah, and I'll work with the fire chief on it. Okay, that's good with that. Yeah, I'll that. 
Okay, so we're both good with that. Okay, thank you. And for the discussion, uh, that one, when would it come back to us? Uh, we'll do our best to see if we can get it to next week's meeting. To the main hall? Yeah, okay. okay. Excellent. All in favor? Okay. Uh, next letter from the Council of Canadians. Move for seat. Thank you. Second. I'll receive that. Any discussion? Councilor Perks. I, I was under the impression that the new Trans Pacific Trade Partnership had overrides previous trade agreements. Sure. Well, it doesn't so. cover, the TPP does not, to my knowledge, cover Europe. This is Canada Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, the TPP covers bunch of other nations, mainly in the Pacific side of things. Similar type of discussions, I'm sure. And it's still subject to ratification as it's noted here. CETA hasn't yet been ratified. Um, FCM had some information on it. I haven't looked at it recently, but it's one of those things. I mean, I know they're asking us to raise all these issues, but really through FCM, I guess, is where a number of those issues have been raised and addressed. Mm -hmm. and, and, I mean, is there anything that you're aware of, Richard, that you found an impediment to? No. Nope. Uh, I suppose it could affect procurement at some point, but uh, it hasn't been yet ratified. And I guess there was concerns raised through FCM about local governments generally. So no doubt the same thing will be raised through the TPP ratification process. My quick comment is that I think it would be premature to make that assumption. Um, as somebody said on the radio today describing it, but there's the devil in the details, and we don't know the, all the details yet. Yeah. Sure. yeah. All right, so we'll just receive that for the time. Uh, all those in favor, then? Motion's carried. A letter from the uh, Avian Rescue Society, Mad Perch, regarding the Blue Heron Project. Move to see. Second. Uh, you'll see she's looking for some posts and so on. Um, has the park staff been talking to her? Staff looking yes, in the and uh, staff are in support and will assist the organization in putting up the signs at, uh, I think the requested area was the Pink Homes boat launch. Mm -hmm. yeah. We'd be happy to help them. Okay. okay. So, great. So that's all we, and that's all we need to do there. And there's also whether we would, district, would um, put brochures in public Sure. Yeah. Okay. All right. All in favor? Mm -hmm. uh, another letter here, or sorry, letter next is to do with the uh, vampire display case, and that's not for Frankenstein. Although Halloween is coming. Yeah. It's a vampire jet. Yeah. Uh, which is a wooden jet, and. Uh, well, Dave Mellon, honorary colonel for 407 Squadron, is working on that. So you can see that he's made a request. Now, uh, this may be something that we need a staff report on, I don't know, but uh, we should certainly receive a letter. And see well, I was going to move receipt and then ask staff if we needed what the possibilities of granting his request are, how that would work. So. Okay. Can we pre -clar get clarification to how much of the bill grant this would affect? Well, that's probably why we need a, we need a staff yeah, report. Yeah. It depends on value of the building yeah. and so on. And, and it wouldn't affect what we already get. They would charge yeah. you because of a new building, and you would waive it. But if you Just can. to clarify. Not a big building, 40 by 40. Mm -hmm. And are they looking at putting it right up by the um, curling rink? Is that or ice rink there? I think yeah, that's what I heard. Across from across from the existing planes, somewhere on the ice. Right. So in that area, yeah. there was no map. So we'll see you. Uh, receipt refer to staff. Yeah. Yes, please. Uh, the director of finance is currently on vacation, so I was unable to get That's fine. any information, but we'd be happy to provide it uh, within a few meetings. Yeah, that's yeah. great. Don't see any particular urgency at all. Uh, all those in favor, then? Mm -hmm. Motion's carried. And the last piece of correspondence is from Kimberly Strain regarding its purple lights or something. I would move receipt. Second. On receipt then, uh, CEO? No, not on receipt. Okay. So, anything, any further discussion on that one? All in favor? Motion is carried. Just that, uh, again, our, our uh, Parks Department has made mention that 
they can accommodate, uh, I think they were thinking of stringing purple lights on the, uh, in the town square in front of the Comox Mall. Okay. On the, uh, okay. So in February. Yes, and I'll be assisting them at that time. Mm. All right. Sounds good. No other items of correspondence or late any delegations or reports from members of council. Start with Councillor Margaret. Oh, thank you. Um, first of all, I'd like to say thank you very much to Hugh for serving as my alternate down in Nano at the library board meeting. Um, several several things happened for for me and things that need the town of Comox. One is our solid waste management board meeting. And there were a couple of points that were really quite interesting. First of all, one that caught my attention was Director Rod Nichol shared uh, his, his research on a technology that's going to greatly reduce the volume of municipal solid waste to our landfills. He actually did a hands-on demonstration that went around the table, and it was very impressive to see how much this high tech was able to reduce that fill and staff is going to look into it and evaluate and report back on 2016 and if in fact it proves to be as successful as Rod suggested it would be, it's going to save taxpayers of the Comox Valley a great deal of money, so it's a very good thing. Um, also, has it, it's very interesting, I think everyone should have an opportunity to visit this solid waste management. It's uh, it's quite an experience and an education. For example, accepting, now the staff again is going to have a report on accepting hazardous construction debris such as pre-1990 gypsum and materials containing asbestos. Obviously this is a major concern and they want to divert that material away from the landfill and the results again are going to determine the tipping point. Which was very inter interesting. Uh, also attended the BIA AGM. As pointed out, we had a, a quorum, didn't we, sir? Mm -hmm. Yes. It was it was very good. I was thoroughly impressed. And the one point that I'd like to make with regard to that was I sensed a very good connectedness happening between CVEDS, BIA, and Comox, which is obviously a great benefit for our town. Good thing. Also. The seniors had their first board meeting in the fall, and they applied for a New Horizons grant. And, and these seniors are a very enthusiastic group, I'm proud to say. <laughs> very good. Uh, they've got a very busy social schedule. They serve good food, and they have a popular gathering for many, many people. So, three cheers to them. Oh, and hospital board. I'm going to leave that to someone else. <laughs> she, she knows everything about it. We have a strategic planning. Oh, yeah, uh, retreat happening tomorrow, though. Looking forward to that one. Okay, Councilor Ken. Yes, um, as acting mayor, when Mayor Ice was away, I had a busy September. Um, I covered him at a number of events, including the United Way kickoff breakfast with the people that spoke to us today. Cumberland uh, Royston Lions dinner. Um, uh, as Mark uh, mentioned, I had attended the library, Vancouver Island Regional Library Board meeting in Nanaimo the Battle of Britain Anniversary Ceremony, uh, Comox Valley Multicultural Potluck, uh, a Don to Don uh, meeting. I, I was asked to uh, uh, attend and, and do the AGM for elections there. Uh, Comox Valley Homeless Coalition meeting. Uh, I attended the BIA meeting as well and uh, uh, just want to announce we're, we're uh, losing our Executive Director, Mary Ruth Harris, and uh, however there's uh, uh, a short list that's been established and uh, uh, they're going to uh, uh, hopefully announce a new executive director there and uh, that's exciting although we want to, if you get the opportunity, we want to thank Mary Ruth, she did a great job as a, a, a executive director for the BIA uh, and last night attended the Comox Fire Hall uh, uh, dedication to uh, uh, Captain Stuart Rennie, his wife was there and it was just a wonderful touching moment for uh, to honor uh, uh, Stuart Rainey and his family. Uh, last but not least, I attended the UBCM, and as I was driving back from the UBCM, I remembered I said at a council meeting that, that someone who goes to the meeting should make a report back, and I thought, oh, damn. <laughs> so I have to stick to my word now. So I did do a report for anybody that's interested, and uh, I've got handouts for you here. I also have the uh, program, uh, both in long and short form, and the resolutions, if anybody wants to take a look at it. 
but uh, I just uh, made some comments here, and I do have a, a contact uh, form uh, from the Welcome to Tools, Resources, and Funding for Local Governments uh, uh, reference uh, for 55 different organizations here, uh, which you might, might uh, want to have access to. Um, so I'll pass this to you, and I have to say I did keep a promise. Uh, I mean, I mean, my typing is not the greatest in the world, so please forgive me. Two pages, no, I don't know how they could just follow you on Facebook, you always put it there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah. please pass it on and have a look at it. I guess I'm there. Two more. Thank you, Councilor. <clears throat> Yes, so I did attend the uh, Philmont Art and Museum Society meeting, and uh, it's um, the dioramas. I haven't actually been in while they've been put up, but I've seen them in the back room. So do go in and see them. They're very interesting. They're like, um, well, you have to see them. They're little um, three-dimensional um, historical showing how Philmont was in there. And uh, yes, yeah, so it's looking good there. I was at UBCM, a uh, busy time, and on the UBCM executive, so I did have to be a moderator uh, for some of the sessions, and um, and also as the AVICC president hosted our association luncheon. Um, the um, mid-sized communities forum was very topical, looking at. Uh, uh, issues that have affected us this year around fire, floods and droughts and uh, a lot of information there. Um, as um, Vice Chair of the Comox Valley Water Committee, I was part of the uh, delegation, as, as was the Mayor, that met with the Ministry, Ministry of Health staff on a couple of occasions to discuss drinking water issues and uh, the uh, turbidity and, um, and, and looking for assistance. Uh, as a member of the UBCM Committee on First Nations, I met with the Honourable John Rustad, the Minister of Aboriginal Relations and Reconciliation, and with the AVICC Executive, met with the Honourable Michelle Stilwell, Minister of Social Development and Social Innovation, to talk about Accessibility 2024, which she was very <coughs> keen on, and it's not just about making your sidewalks more accessible, it's uh, looking at... Um, ways to employ people who have disabilities. There's a, a whole range of... Because uh, one of our focuses was could we have some money to go with this project because it costs municipalities a lot of money to update the infrastructure. But she tried to stress too that there's a lot of things that we could do that uh, aren't expensive. So I will put this in the, uh, in the reading room. There's lots of things around accessibility and uh, age-friendly British Columbia, and, um, which, you know, in many ways it's very topical, and, and although she herself uses a wheelchair, she is pointing out that all of us very soon could be in the same situation. We've certainly got an aging population. Um, Yes, and so and her thrust is to make us the most progressive province in Canada for people with disabilities by 2024. So, uh, particular highlight of the convention for me was uh, the study tour, uh, designing communities for better health, which was a walking tour of Lonsdale of North Vancouver, where they redeveloped the old uh, shipbuilding area, and they have really gone into. Uh, trail networks and, and they've actually seen a reduction in traffic because they've had such a successful trail network and connecting into a major trail, the Spirit Trail, which when all the municipalities link up, the idea is it will go to um, down to Horseshoe Bay. So they've done some incredible things, community gardens and they've tried to stay relatively low and for complex uh, still high, but they've, they've tried to really balance uh, community values. And um, uh, as part of my role with UBCM, I have started the Cultural Competency Training Program, which Richard is also taking. It's an uh, internet based learning forum uh, coming out of the First Nations Truth and Re Reconciliation. And it's aimed at creating a greater understanding that only through truth can there be re reconciliation. 
I also attended the RD board meeting, uh, RD water committee, sewage committee, and the RD committee as a whole. Pump station, Colmont pump station number two, the new proposal uh, was uh, uh, front and center of our meeting yesterday, and um, it's one of those you think that you have reached consensus and that you know, there's no perfect solution. But, uh, however, the reception wasn't as, as welcoming as... Lukewarm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, definitely um, still a lot of concerns out there. And again, you know, a packed, a packed room. So, uh, the... I, I, I don't know if you're aware of the new site that's proposed. It's at the um, bottom of Croto Beach, where the road right of way between the Ministry of Transportation and um, Colmox is. Uh, the hazard abatement order report was also on the agenda, so there's some pretty meaty uh, uh, topics. That's for the water service, right? The water, yeah. And, uh, in, in the committee as a whole, we did do some revisiting of transit, uh, transit <coughs> policy on free buses, and uh, uh, Derek Grant, we were looking at the three um, municipal events being uh, kept as free travel on the buses, and, and uh, Derek Grant also pointed out we need to include the air base, so having four events in the year where it would be um, the free buses. And, uh, and, and how the handy dart use is being re-looked at so that where people are able to get on the buses, it's, it's a program where people actually are given a lot of information about uh, what our buses currently can do, because our regular bus service can be very handicapped accessible and that not everybody needs to be on a handy dart and how do you move people into the main transit system. So a new program has worked out which seems to be well received even by those who no longer get transit, uh, get handy dart. Seems to be very respectfully done. Thank you. Thank you for that. Councillor Swift. Oh, I don't know if I can add anything new to this. <laughs> Um, I attended the Comox Strathcona Waste Management Meeting, as uh, uh, Councillor Grant has already spoken about, but of note there was an update regarding the closure of the landfill, and uh, it's proceeding on time. And I had gone up to look at it, oh, this was probably a month ago now, and it, um, it's going to be a big mountain, but um, it's, it's going to look great. Um, the regular road to the landfill, most of you probably know, is closed as the road is being upgraded. Uh, you can still access it, but there is a detour route. Um, and that work is scheduled be, to be completed by the end of November, I think. Um, so if you need to go up to the landfill, you can still get there. Uh, the Comox uh, Strathcona Regional Hospital Board, um, as you know from the newsletter it, uh, that you received in your mailbox, the hospitals are proceeding on time and still on budget, which is great. Uh, the board is providing a letter of support for the fixed wing training facility, uh, but uh, regrettably there was no interest in finding a way to grant back the pilt at the regional level. So we didn't, it just didn't go anywhere. Um, I attended the sewage commission meeting and um, to say that the reception of the new site was lukewarm is, I, I believe, a bit of an understatement. <laughs> But uh, hopefully we'll be able to work through it. It's something that we really need to get on because uh, we're heading into another winter of fuss uh, and storms and we need to get that line off the uh, beach. So uh, hopefully we'll be able to proceed without any more uh, delays. Uh, and on behalf of the mayor, I welcome the cops for cancer to Comox. And uh, it had been a beautiful morning, but by the time we got there it had started to rain. So it was a good reminder that they... This is a big commitment for these people, and they don't always ride in ideal conditions. So they came in their rain gear and dripping wet, and uh, but lots of enthusiasm, and off they went. And then I also attended the fire station dedication of the vehicle last night, which was, was great, and 
once again, the firefighters were called out on call. <laughs> so, <laughs> so not all of them got to uh, see the dedication. So, thank you. Yeah, um, well, I tagged along with Councillor Swift and went to the Cops for Cancer as well. It was a great event, good turnout for people. Um, volunteered some time at the Terry Fox Run. Attended the North Island College uh, Scholarship Bursary Awards Night, which was uh, a really nice ceremony, and uh, a lot of well deserving um, students got uh, some uh, scholarships, bursaries out of it. And then last night, we went to the Comox uh, BIA AGM. All right, I think we've beaten the sewer thing to death, so I won't go to that. Um, I did attend the sewer, the water, and the committee of the whole uh, yesterday at the regional district, and we also had an camera on each of those, and I don't think there's much I can add to what's already been said, so I'll leave it at that. Great, thanks. I uh, wanted to thank Councillor McKinnon uh, for pinch-hitting for me while I was away. Um, off to Holland for two weeks and a bit. Certainly uh, found uh, lots of interesting things to see there from the sea of a bike. And uh, we had a great time. And, and, and the compact country that it is, uh, one of the most densely populated countries in the world, uh, they all seem to get along pretty well, even though it's just a constant flow of bikes and pedestrians and trains and trams and everything. It just seems to all work. So. Uh, beautiful country and a great time to, to see it. Um, when I came back, I had all of a day's grace here before I turned around to UBCM. And the CAO and I met uh, first thing on Tuesday with the Minister of Aboriginal Affairs just to update things with Comox First Nation in terms of their treaty discussions and some of the properties that they're interested in uh, looking at here in the town of Comox as per our memorandum of understanding. Also looked at, um, or sorry, had a meeting with the Minister of Health about the future role of St. Joseph's Hospital and had some good discussions there. Certainly on their radar screen as the new hospitals get built, what to do with St. Joe's is, is, a, is obviously a concern that we all have. Also had a meeting, um, attended those meetings that Councillor Price was at to do with the water uh, issue at Perseverance Creek. And then later in the week, uh, managed to get in on a meeting with the Ministry of Transport as part of the electoral areas meeting with him, and just talked about our uh, funding application for Lazo Road restoration, which of course would have an impact on electoral areas as well. And then the CEO and I met with staff regarding a couple boundary extensions that uh, we're making progress on, one in the Hector Road area, is it? Yes. and the other to do with the pump station number two. So uh, those are all very productive meetings. I uh, attended most of the resolution sessions when I could. Uh, all very interesting, all well reported on, and, and of course uh, some good keynote speaker there, uh, Roberta Morgan, former astronaut. I'm sure that's outlined in news report because he was there too. Um, coming back here, I had a meeting with Dermot Kelly, who is with the Health Authority. And they've kind of rejigged things with the health authority, so we're in an area called like, Geography One or something. And he works hand in hand with uh, uh, Dr. Jeff Basalt. And they're just, you know, again, talking about future role of St. Joe's and sort of updating him on that. So it was nice of him to come see me. Uh, the BIA meeting was uh, good. The new board, the AGM, uh, all the resolutions passed. That seemed to be going well, in good hands. CVEDS had their quarterly board meeting yesterday. More of a business as usual kind of uh, thing, a good report in particular on the Shellfish Festival and the media coverage that was generated of that. And simply put, the, uh, the festival, as you know, has gotten bigger and better. And the numbers of uh, you know, hits on the internet and all that stuff uh, were just way up. And I think the, the festival will get even better next year. So. A lot of work goes into that, but it was refreshing to see, of course, that one of the benefits is more people staying in the hotels, uh, principally in uh, Courtney, but also here, and the numbers on that were at least double what they were the previous year. So that, of course, is funded in part by the hotel room tax uh, program. Uh, fire truck dedication ceremony last night, and then this afternoon met briefly with Steve Chambers. You may recall he's with the Comox Valley Pickleball Association, and he is 
is uh, going to come talk to us next week about a grant application that they're going to uh, make with the Community Foundation as well. I think they're also applying under New Horizons. So we'll give us an update on that. And then last, I had this uh, given to me for council and staff for their assistance. Uh, this is from Andy Walter, a uh, commander of the CB Sailing Club, and a nice picture of some of their sailing program uh, underway there in the summer, and just to thank the staff of the town for their support, and of course Andy was involved with the uh, Met Al 360 as well. So we'll put that in a suitable place. And I think that's it. Um, I mentioned at a previous meeting um, some of the work on the climate leadership team. And we're now in the final throes of that, so there'll be two more meetings next week and maybe one at the end of next month, uh, the end of the month, I should say, to try to bring that to a conclusion. And at that point, hopefully, there'll be some um, stuff we can tell you more about. We'll go to Cabinet, and then ultimately, uh, the Premier wants to take it to the COP meetings in uh, Paris. Um, so we'll see what happens with all that. That's it for me. Uh, any media left? No, I got <laughs> And uh, members of the public are here. Any questions? No, I'm just here to observe. Okay. And otherwise, motion to adjourn would be in order. Move. Second. All those in favor? Meeting adjourned. Oh, I remember what we were talking about. I wanted to say that the collaboration might be